Hey Metal Game Warriors, this is the Metal Game Man Warrior. Today, we're going to take on a short tutorial on Wizard City. Just a general tutorial. I'm not going to go into specifics for different worlds. I'm just going to take a look at Wizard City. This tutorial is ideal for beginners. You usually start out in the game in Golem Court. And there you'll have your, your Malister scene. Malister is the the first villain of the game. And after you have that intro, you'll get out and you go see Headmaster Ambrose. What? Let's see, what am I doing here? I'm thumbing through my pets. By the way, I have a small army of Dure Knights in my palace. I want to train a few of them though. Training pets. There's another thing in this game. Pets can help me in battle. It's painful and expensive. Okay, so. With your pets. Healing and attack power. To me at least. Are the best attributes to have. This is the side door to Master Ambrose's office. And we're cutting through his study with Woodsy Owl in the spiral. Say hi to Woodsy. Okay, then we go see him. He dismisses us. And then we go see a guard that will take us the rest of the way to Wizard City. It is here. That you'll see those guys, hey, you can do this with your text chat or whatever chat you've been authorized, or to your age. Okay. The commons. The Wizard City. Okay. Here we have that guard I was talking to you about. And he'll give you authorization to go to Unicorn Way. While you're hanging around, check out people and their stats. See what kind of weapons armor they have. Ah, Penny. She'll give you an unnecessary quest. You do not have to do all the quests. Storyline ones, yeah. Means you do all of them. You get maxed out for experience, and you still have more quests to do. Well, it should be working for nothing. Kind of, for more experience anyway. Okay, Golden Court has another quest. All right, you'll meet this guy in Zafaria. Zafaria is another world. And you'll have certain places you go for different spells. This cave coming up here is one of them. I think it's either a fire or a myth spell, I can't remember. This fire, ice, storm, death, myth, balance, life, or schools of magic. Now here's, here's your green thumb guy. You can plant plants in your dorm or your palace, and when they grow, they can give you things like treasure cards, reagents, things like that. Stork can buy back your training points for you. You'll meet uh, Prospector Zeke a number of times in every world. He'll give you training points. Other people are getting your training points so you can learn new spells. Because to learn new spells outside of your school, you have training points. You see here, he is offering to buy back our spells. And we're about to call the Circus Circle. And she can help you refill your potions when you're out of health. Well, let's face it, sometime or another, when you get defeated, there is no shame being defeated once in a while. 
Ah, the carousel. You can get one of these. Inside, I think it's the Creepy Clown Carnival Gauntlet and Bundle, whatever. It's been a while since I bought it. And you can get this thing in the little car that four people in. Alright, so there's another girl over here that you can learn defense spells from. I know they're in the corner. These little sigils here can also help you regain your um, your health and your mana. This is faster though to buy them back. If you have the gold, if you don't, that's no problem. Okay. So we should be referencing those shields. Shields um, with training points, of course, you can get shield treasure cards. I'm sorry, shield spells, like spell spells in your deck. Your treasure cards are something else. They're expendable. The training cards, your training spells, you'll never, or, yeah, you can run out of them, but um, you'll always have them, you'll never have to buy them. Treasure cards you have to buy. All right. Prospector Zeke will help. Will ask you to help them find those guys. And by finding the little red men, the merchants, you get, um, you get a training point. And there'll be several of those throughout the game. Red men, oh, little men. Maybe find other things for them. In Quacktopia, I can find cockroaches or things. Okay, there's Penny, the Unnecessary Quest Girl, and like I said, you can check people out, check out their stats, and see if they have weapons and armor that you might like to add. So what have we here? Usually when I do that, I got better stuff, and I usually don't want someone else's stuff, especially if they're the wrong school. Okay, in here we have a well, like a castle display. You can decorate your palace. And after you decorate it, go to this guy here. And you can put it on display for everyone in the game to see. You can make like a maze out of your, your palace or a hotel, like I usually do, whatever. And then there's another cat over here that you go and see and you can play games inside those palaces. Something which I have not built up yet, or probably will. It's just not my thing. There's a lot of different things to do from Mr. 101. You don't have to do everything. And not everything you're gonna be digging. Okay, off we go. And we come outside here. I think the next place, dorms, is the dorms. That was the male dorm. And that is the female dorm. Guys cannot go into the female dorm and vice versa. The game will let you do it. You can port to your buddy, but you can't go in the door. Go figure. Okay. Well, I don't know this sir, anyway. It'll be empty. Alright. This is your dorm. You can decorate it like you like. And I'm gonna run back in because I forgot to show you about the chest. And the bank, they call it. You have a bank, a shard bank, and your backpack. And that little setup there. Your bank can only hold a certain amount of things. It won't hold every type of item like your backpack and your shard bank will. Your bank is just for your character. If you need a buddy that visits you, you can use that thing too. Only it will be just for his stuff and you won't be able to see it. Um, and so, you can carry everything that you normally carry in your backpack. You can go through and drop things off because like in D&D, &D, the bag of holding, you know, it can hold so much crap. 
There you go, salsa. In your dorm, and in your palace, you can also hold only so many things. And then, that start guy, or Zeke, or say, hey, you're holding a bit more than you can carry, I'm going to sell something. Otherwise, if you don't, you end up losing something. First one, we have a frog. We're an instructor. Not all the teachers are going to be human. Okay, I think I went in here. And, we go in. We get for the marching orders. And then, off you go. You can go in there and you get into chrysalis. You have to forge a key for the door. Like World of Warcraft, there's different worlds. Give me a spiral key to get into each of those worlds. There's the frosty tree for the ice skull. Too bad you can't get ice cream from this guy. So that'd be really cool. Okay. This is a seasonal si um, dungeon sigil for Krampus. In it's Austria. Krampus is a uh, Christmas guy over there. And what he does is he snatches up misbehaving children. So that's one of the ways that country helps keep their children in check. Oh, Krampus is going to get you. Let's behave. Oh. In the United States, that would so be terrifying, and I really can't see that going very well. So, some people have Santa Claus here. Alright, this is the dungeon. The Krampus dungeon has three levels. The wooden key level, you need a wooden key to get in there. It's our housing item. <clears throat> There's the stone key, which is a little bit tough for Krampus. And the tough, tough Krampus is the gold key. I think he has 30,000 hit points in that one. One thing about the Krampus dungeons, do not get your hopes up. Well, you can do what you like, of course, but um, his drops are kind of rare. At least they've been with me. Maybe you're, you know someone who's been luckier, but uh, he has not been. First time I ever fought Krampus, it took me like two hours. I had a bad team. It took me two hours to do it. You know what I got out of it? A lump of coal. That's it. What's up with that? Whatever. All right. I have a row back to KI. What's up with that? Oh, sorry, there's nothing we can do. You gotta take your chances. Whatever. That's all right. These trees, you can craft. With those reagent things, you can craft spells that are a little bit better than the normal spells for your school. Your tree for your school. On that, you want a different school? You know, trade treasure cards with buddies or go to the bazaar. Or sometimes they come in drops. You need to feed enemies. Okay, so here's the death annex. We'll teach you a couple things. And then over here is a sigil for on Halloween time. There's a couple of Halloween dungeons, like a Krampus dungeon and Christmas time. And there's another one over here during Halloween. I think there's like three of them and with different difficulty. Here after you get used to it, it's just more or less fun. Alright. Here we have Cirrus Drake. Or some people like to call him Drake the Jerk. Because he is. He is the toughest instructor and he has an attitude problem. When I, when I first started playing the game, I was really taken back how rude he was. I think I even wrote KI asking about that. Is it supposed to be this way? Whatever. 
Just for your teachers to be helpful, you know? Whatever. All right. Here is monstrology. In battle, you can capture the monsters, make them into treasure cards, and summon them to help you in battle. You have weak monsters. If you're really good at monstrology, you can summon a pretty good one. I personally have one of Malister. Very, very rare. Um, I don't know if I'll ever use it, but it's cool that. Daily assignments. You can go to this guy, and he will give you tasks to complete. Gold, crowns, whatever. And they have nothing to do with the main quest, main plot of the story. Okay. No, not yet. We're going to see the ice instructor, which is a seven inch fairy. Whatever. Okay. She's kind of human, kind of. Alright. No memory you're see familiar? Maybe, maybe. Yeah, man. Right, here we go. Her looks have changed since I started back in 2011. And there she is. She is a human. A hot human. Hot kid. At <laughs> Where am I now? Retarded. Okay. Um, so, schools are kind of set up the same way. Okay, and the life instructor is a cow, of all things. But, that's cool. Will they speak your language? Whatever. That's the boiling cauldron of life juice, whatever that is. Okay. Oh, there he is. The Balance School Instructor Annex. I'll teach you a few things about balance. But the actual Balance School is in Quacktopia, which is the world right after this. Grizzleheim is also after this. Grizzleheim and Wisteria are unnecessary worlds. You do not have to complete them. Here's the world door that you can go to all the different worlds. There's four pages of them now. So Kia comes out with a new world. And there's the spiral. A little bit bigger than the solar system. Smaller than the galaxy. And there's nothing really much in it. Once in a while, on a side quest, I'll have somebody there talking to you. Hang out with your buddies here. I've seen people have old parties in the world tree. Yeah, man. We know you. Yep. There's a little waterfall here. And underneath that waterfall, this is where the death school is. And here we are. There's another girl over there that can give you an unnecessary quest. You do not have to complete that one. And there's the, the annex school. Here we have it. The death school instructor. And I'll show you kind of a cool thing you can do with him. You can do the same thing with the Cractopian instructor. Okay. As soon as you get behind him. And you get kind of close. And you get the camera angle in, you see. You can kind of see through him, kind of. See through his mouth. Kind of empty. I like a soul. Alright. 
dungeon has nothing to do with any plot to the game or they kind of make it out to be but you can deal without it there's no you ain't got to do it to beat the game uh, or you don't actually beat the game you just kind of get to maximum experience and then help other people get there you teleport to the commons by using the little icons on the lower right hand side there and I think we're going to show no, I guess that's later I think we're going to show you Prospect or Zeke that's the guy I had a finding crap because he loses stuff you can also rent to you mounts, temporary mounts it's better to get permanent ones. You do not need crowns to get a permanent mount. On the lower scale, the tigers and that, you can get those mounts for gold. You do not have to spend crowns for them. Okay, with this girl, she can stitch your gear. You got a piece of gear that looks really cool, but the stats are kind of meh. So you get some gear. That's good stats. That's ugly. Find a piece of gear that looks cool. Marry them up together. And that's what stitching is. That's what she helps you do. That does cost crowns. So it's a hundred grand. Yeah, a hundred crowns per pot. The cat maestro here tells you a little bit about it. There's training sigils on the side. And you can go around, there's different areas, train your pets, different games you can play, help train them, so you can learn stats, kind of like good experience kind of. And the store here actually sells the pets, you can buy them, you spend crowns on them, and sometimes they come as quests, drops, whatever. That's one of the games, this is a hatchery. You can take the stats of your pet and mix it with the stats of a different pet and maybe make something different or reinforce stats of the same quality, especially if you're one to deal attack power. And here's some of the stats that some of you might have. Those little dots on the side signify their rarity. If they're common, I think the five, four or five dot stat is an epic one, and it's kind of good. The attack power. Okay. And that cat in the center, he is part of Marblebone, which is a necessary world. Now, here. Is the sigil for you and your buddy, the white one. And you can marry up those, those pets between you and your buddy. And here's Dr. Cats. You'll meet him in Monobone, like I said, and you can actually get one of those mobile pet hatchery things. All right, there is a couple of different places in here where you can get pet snacks from a normal store or from this guy with arena tickets. You get arena tickets when you do PvP, player versus player. There's five other wizards. Watch your buddy. Guy you can't stand in the commons. There's a loud mouth or whatever. Whoever. Okay. The best pet snacks, which adds to the experience once your pet's done training. They're called Mega Snacks, and they have a lot more 
a lot more experience, but they cost crowns, like 2,500 per pack, and you get like seven a pack. Only seven. And then we got photography guy. That's kind of a new thing that came up. You can take pictures of crap, different angles, special angles, and display them in your castle, show your buddies, your expert photographer, whatever. And this turtle guy showed how to do it. There was a guy out in the comments I didn't hit, I remember. He showed how to fish. Fish can also give you sets, it's like pets. And you can display your fish inside aquariums, inside your dorm, or your palace. And he's showing you the in and outs. Okay, there's another train schedule for that photography thing. Kind of like monstrology, only pictures. Okay. Now we're going to go inside the library, where there is a dog. There's a dog as the librarian. McGruff the crime dog. Okay, he's pretty cool though. Sometimes he puts you on quests. And in the libraries of all the worlds, they can sell you treasure cards like this. You can look at them all together. You can break them apart by school. You can use spells that are not your school, but it takes longer. There are these white dots and yellow dots called pips in battle. And you'll learn about them. power pips of the yellow ones, and you can use those with your school. It counts as double. So you got two power pips, counts as four. If the spell calls for, calls for four pips. Okay, looks like they had the myth flag there. Dark hallway, which you can't go down. Books. Oops, those are books. Never mind. There's the ice flag over there. And the rectangular buckets, transporting books. Okay. I think we are going to go out in Unicorn Way now. And there's this guy again. He'll always be there. So that when you complete the quest, that Exclamation point in that. Front part. Uh, question mark goes away. Okay. Then there's these guys. They can sell you different jewels that enhance your weapons and armor. Maybe a little more attack power, a little more defense, more health, whatever. Okay, and there's our eight foot hat. Whoever wants that, you can pick in different colors. And this one here, it looks like you get gold. Yeah. Spend gold with that. Further down the way, Wizard City is like the weakest, weakest world. Okay, there's Diego. He can also teach you different spells. And this cat, you can spend arena tickets to earn or to buy uh, <clears throat> crap for your house, your palace, paintings, wallpaper, whatever. Fish tank, it looks like. So 
for about an hour. It's a little winded and dry. Okay, and this cat is selling armor that you can get using the arena tickets. And different ones, which if you're up with your game, are usually not as good as the ones you already have. Okay, and then PvP. And here it is. Here's the arena. Get your buddies here, fight each other. And there's train sigils. And sigils that you sign up for. So you can go at it with whoever with your buddy, you do it in teams. And forward Sears. Bartleby. Bartleby spell though. Gives a little bit of life. A shield. And then maybe we'll go back to the comments now. Yep, off we go. Okay. So we have we're gonna go back to the comments here. And I think we're gonna go to Old Town, the shopping district. There's a store straight ahead that you can dye your clothes and give your pet a different name. Then, there's a few other stores. You can buy pets, houses, crap favorite palace. You can also buy stuff from your palace in the crown shop. As you can see here in the crown shop, you can get packs. There's usually come seven cards in a pack. You can get reagents, pets, or things like that. You can also gift your buddies. Just click on their name, that little gift icon. And then, oh, and you have to be their pal to gift them. Here we have the helping kiosk. And when somebody does a team up and it's empty, their name appears here. And you just go here, try to help them out. Here's the cat sells reagents, so you can craft. Here's one of the people. That starts your crafting process, gives you recipes, you craft gear, cards, all kinds of stuff, so you don't have to buy it. Speaking of buying, here's a bazaar, and here at the bazaar, you can buy stuff, sell stuff, sell stuff that's been dropped in battle, don't want any more, or picked up. Like reagents laying on the ground. And then you can sell from your bank, but you cannot sell from your shared bank. Just from your regular bank. And some of these scenes are blackened. You click that box there. And just gives you the stuff that is only suitable for your character. Some of it's geared towards your school. Some of it's universal. And some of the stuff you can and cannot sell, depends on whether it's crowns only, no auction it'll say. Not sure why Ki or Ki set it up that way, but they did. Okay, and it is pretty much all gear. You sell cards, buy cards, reagents. Can't buy and sell pets here though. Okay. I'm getting her backpack here. We're getting the, the menu anyway. Start at the top is your personal stats. You can see how much gold you have, crowns, experience, 
how much you'll need to the next level, how many tickets you have, your energy levels, for if you want cra to not craft um, pet train or garden, you will need energy to do that. And going further down the stats, how much attack power you got, critical, critical blocking rating. Mind you, at the criticals, just because something is a hundred, like your criticals a hundred, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get it all the time. It's not a percentage, it's a number. I think almost a guaranteed critical is like five or eight hundred, I can't remember. But to me, raw attack power is best. Um, then you got armor piercing in case your enemy has armor defense. And you can see higher rank and gardening, other things. How many badges you got? What do you need to the next badge? Your badge collector or a badger, honey badger, whatever. And so how you do in uh, PvP and how your pet does with its competition. And then further down, more stats, more ratings. And then your slots for your crafting. Because once you craft, you gotta wait a little while before you can craft again. Unless you spend crowns and buy another slot or retimer, whatever. And then you can go down, see your gear, kind of stuff you got, stuff you want to sell, keep, whatever, and your list of houses. You can only carry so many houses, up to nine. And so, you're really into that. But to me, one house is good enough for a character, but that's up to you. There's a list of those seeds you can get for your gardening. You know, harvest the whatever they give you, the reagents, treasure cards, whatever. Pet snacks. Reagents, jewels. Fixed to your weapons and armor and pet. And monstrology, photography thing if you're into that. With these sockets, with the jewels, there's some for attack power, defense, more mana. Sometimes they have treasure cards like that. And the triangle ones are the really good ones. Give you accuracy. And you can take a look at your pets. See what kind of ratings they have. What you need for the next level, whatever. And with your deck, your attack power, your blades. So you got a plus 30 blade. You get one of those swords in them. And bump it up to 40. You can carry each one of those. As long as they're different somehow. And you can get armor sets. Maybe a special armor set for attack power, one for defense. Sometimes you can get so high speed in defense you become immune to certain attacks, certain schools. Oh, you can name your spell deck for different spell decks, for helping buddies or dungeons, whatever. Here's your quests. Mind you, once you start a quest or an assignment, you can't get out of it. You're stuck with it until it's complete. So be careful who you accept quests from. Also with the maps, you can press M for mic on your keyboard. See the map? And you can look at your crafting stuff. Just general helps. 
general things, tell you about the spells, how they work, how quests work, whatever. And the gear for your settings, adjust the light resolution, things like that, realms. Speaking of realms, there's a lot of different realms because the servers can only hold so many people until the game starts slowing up. And so they have different realms, so that didn't happen. So good for KI. And here's more of the more of the settings. You can adjust your sound, sound on off. Don't play music. When you're playing the game, you don't have to listen to Wizard 101 theme sound. And then, we'll go back here, go back here to the palace, and put different stuff in your castle, in your palace, and you do that lower right hand nubby there, you can put stuff on your wall, display stuff on the floor, whatever you like. There's limitations on where you can put things. It would be red if it didn't go there. Okay. Teleportation's good. Prevents you from having to walk or drive everywhere. And it does cost mana. So mind do that. You're in a tight spot. Need your mana. Or need to teleport somewhere. Okay, when you go to your house, you click your palace, and you click that house icon again, it'll take you back to the dorm. It's a little convenient if you need to go back to Wizard City. Or, when you go to any other world, in this case we're going to go back to Azteca, and click the re-teleport button in the lower right, bam. Maybe, come on, there you go. It'll take you back to that exact same spot. How convenient. Okay. I do believe it's gonna wrap it up. Remember, this is Metal Gaming Warrior. Keep one foot in the gutter, one fist in the gold. Bye.